Hola, clase de español 3. Welcome to Spanish 3. Class is in session. You might notice that this is the first time that I've done a, a video, an instructional video, with actual Spanish content from here at home. So this is kind of a new fun thing for us. Um, and we might as well just go ahead and get right to it. All right. So we left off. Uh, and I know we, I know it's been a while. So don't worry if you fall a little bit behind. We're going to walk our way through this. We're going to go back and forth in Google Classroom, or you can ask questions uh, during class when we're in class, or emails and everything will be just fine. Okay, so here we go. Left off uh, at the very beginning of chapter eight, which had a lot to do, like the last chapter or so, with subjunctive mode, subjunctive mood. Well, we're just continuing on with that and working with more subjunctive mood triggers, things that get you to use the subjunctive mood or knowing when to use it and when not to. So. Um, expressing possibility and in, whoops, excuse me, possibility and impossibility. Sorry about that. Hopefully it's still recording properly. Okay. Um, and surprise. That was kind of a weird little glitch. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's just walk through a few of the rules that they're talking about here. The subjunctive after impersonal ex ex uh, expressions. Now, an impersonal expression is any way of saying like, it is necessary, it's important, it's possible, uh, things like that. Those are those are things they're not talking about a person. They're just saying that, like, in general, this is important that, or it is um, necessary that, or it's doubtful that, or something along those lines, okay? Um, so let's just read through this, and we'll give you a few examples. An impersonal expression consists of a form of the verb ser, like to be, so is, uh, plus an adjective. For example, es importante que, like, it's important that, dot, dot, dot. Es necesario que, okay. it's necessary that, da, 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 or es dudoso que. Okay. Spanish uses the subjunctive after all impersonal ser expressions, except those that accept some sort of truth or certainty. Okay, so when we have phrases like es cierto que, okay, it's certain that. Well, there's no doubt implied there, and there's certainly no, uh, so no value placed on what's about to come afterwards, too. It's a statement of truth. It's indicating something, which is why it's in the indicative mode, okay? So, es cierto que, es verdad que, it's true that. Uh, es evidente que, it's evident that. Uh, es obvio que, it's obvious that. So, these are impersonal expressions that express some sort of truth or certainty, uh, having nothing to do with uh, doubt or value or anything like that, okay? So, a couple examples. Es dudoso que la carta llegue pronto. Giving a subjunctive conjugation of llegar here, you can see that. Because es dudoso, it is doubtful that the letter will arrive soon. Okay, another one. Es, now, this one is an indicative mode, just to give you like a, a counterpoint to that. Es cierto que tenemos un buen periódico. All right, it is certain that we have a good newspaper. All right, so in this case, we didn't say it's not certain. We didn't say it's uncertain. We didn't say it's doubtful. We just indicated that what is going to follow is a truth. So, therefore, the tener conjugation remains in the indicative mode. So, there it is. Um, now, there's a few things you got to follow. It, it, it makes logical sense. You just got to keep your thinking cap on for a second here. When the expressions... I'm going to move myself up for a second. There we go. Okay. When expressions like cierto que okay, are made negative, then it becomes subjunctive again because they're implying doubt. So when you say no, it, or, no es cierto instead of es cierto, now instead of using an indicative mode, you're going to use a subjunctive mode because you're implying uncertainty. You're say, stating that something is uncertain. For example, no es cierto que Alberto sea periodista para ser revista. All right. So it is not certain or it is unknown that Albert is, uh, is a reporter for this newspaper. Okay. In this case, you have the conjugation of ser in the subjunctive mode there, sea, as opposed to es, as another example. Okay. This is my great... I know some of you guys have liked some of my transitions in the past, especially like the little flappy bird thing. Here's a better one. Isn't that fun? I just found that one. Okay. Um, when expressions like es dudoso que, okay, it's doubtful that, are made negative. This is like a, a, a negative to a negative situation. It's a fun one. The indicative follows because they no longer indicate doubt. Because es dudoso means it's doubtful, right? But if you say no es dudoso, you're saying it's not doubtful, which is like saying that it is absolutely the case. Therefore, you're indicating. So we got a, just some logical steps to follow linguistically here. Example, no es dudoso que mucha gente lee tiras cómicos. 
horrible. You guys call me gas. We'll fix that. Okay. No es dudoso que mucha gente le quieras cómicas. Uh, it is not doubtful, therefore certain, that a lot of people read comic books. And there you go. Just a little example of how to correctly utilize that. And while I've got you here, you can see me fix my errors on the fly. There we go. Good. We'll go ahead and save that real quick. Boom. And we're good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at our vocab for this week because you not, might have noticed that several of these things dealt with like newspapers, reporters, and things like that. So I wonder what, you know, a big part of this is going to be. Meet up. Newspaper and different newspaper sections and things like that. Interesting point. I was just having this discussion uh, a, a little while ago about why we're learning about newspapers because not a lot of people actually receive a paper newspaper anymore, right? But online periodicals and newspapers are super, super popular. You know, uh, NewYorkTimes.com. Obviously, there's even sections to um, to to 24-hour news cycle TV programs if you go to like you know, uh, CNN.com or anything like that, there's still going to be these same sections that exist within there. So that makes this kind of helpful for us. Okay, I'm only going to go through the vocabulary primarily for pronunciation purposes, but we might take a time out on just a couple of them here to make sure that you, uh, that you get um, the full story behind each word. A lot of these you can figure out on your own, and hopefully you're following along in books, or even if you don't, if you don't have your book, you can always just, you know, use the Quizlet. Um, uh, use the Quizlet app to find the appropriate chapter for it. So here we go. Um, I'll, now, a lot of this has to do with like perhapses and maybes and stuff like that. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to say that in Spanish. Okay. So anyways, a lo, a lo mejor means uh, perhaps or maybe. It looks like better yet, but and, and it can be used in that situation. But when you're implying some sort of a, a doubt sort of a thing, you might say, you know, um, I like this but maybe we should do this, or perhaps we should do this. That's when you might inject an alo an alo mejor into your discussion, okay? Es, now, this is another, these are a couple more I want to talk about quickly. Es difícil que en es fácil que. It looks like it means it's difficult that, or it's easy that, and it doesn't actually translate that way. This is more of an, a, a colloquial expression. So, uh, this is, in this case, difícil translates to unlikely, and fácil translates to likely. So, difficult, unlikely, Fácil, likely, as opposed to difficult versus easy. So some weird ones there. Es difícil que, it's unlikely that. Es fácil que, es likely that. Okay. Es imposible que. Es posible que. I'm sure you can probably guess what these are just by looking at them. Es probable que. Posiblemente. Puede ser que. Quizás en tal vez. These are a couple of inter interesting ones as well, especially quizás. I never under, because I always look for some sort of English connection, uh, some sort of cognate with a lot of these. But but quizás is one of those I've never really found it. And as a side note, uh, there is a, a show, a Netflix show called Money Heist, which none of you should ever watch because it's not appropriate for school or anything. So I just know about this on an intellectual level. Um, but they say quita all the time, okay, the pronunciation, because it's Castilian, they don't say quizás, they say quizás, or just quita. And they're always talking about, like, you know, maybe the professor meant to do this. They say quita el profesor quería hacer algo, or something like that. So I hear that word used all the time when people are speaking in musings, like maybe they meant to do this, or perhaps they meant to do this. Quita is the word in the pronunciation used in Castilian. That's pretty predominant for that. Okay, I'm going to move myself back down here for a second. There we go. Okay, newspaper and online newspaper. So, los anuncios clasificados. A lot of these you can tell cognate-wise what they are here. Obviously, it's classified as. El artículo. Los editoriales. Los obituarios. El periodista o la periodista. A gender-neutral term for a reporter. La primera plana. Like the front page, the primary plane, okay? Uh, la sección de cocina, since a kitchen, you know, so the, the cooking section. La sección de moda, moda meaning fashion, so the fashion section. La sección de ocio. This is an interesting one. It's one of the few that I haven't been able to find a cognate for up until recently. This one is actually the entertainment section, a sección de ocio. I didn't realize this, and some of you who are involved in uh, business or DECA or anything like that may have come across this word 
It's actually a business term to describe anything that is a leisure activity or anything that entertains us. And sometimes an OCO business model is someone who invests in things that are that are that are related to entertainment or leisure activities. So, a little side note: la sección de sociedad, la sección deportiva, la sección. Uh, it says financier, like a financier. No es correcto. Okay, it's financiera. Espera. There it is. Okay, financiera. Las tiras cómicas, los titulares, the titles, the headlines. Let's go ahead and uh, skip down to the last section here. Uh, no es posible. It's not possible. No me digas. Means you don't say. The literal translation is, you know, don't tell me that. Okay, but they uh, just explain. You don't say. No me lo esperaba. I love this one. This is a, a, a very, this is a quintessential Spanish expression. Uh, the translation is that it caught me by surprise. But you notice the word surprise isn't in there. And the word caught isn't in there. So how do we literally translate this and how do they get from point A to point B in this one? No me lo esperaba. Um, uh, me it I didn't wait for. What? Me, it, I didn't wait for it. So I didn't, I wasn't waiting for it, maybe the translation, which means if I wasn't waiting for it, that I wasn't expecting it. Therefore, it must have caught me by surprise. I know that's a bit of a walk, but it is how you get from point A to point B, translation, literal versus general wise. Um, no puede ser. It can't be. Que sorpresa. What a surprise. There, an actual word that means what it says. Es todo. Expressing surprise. Newspaper stuff. Expressing possibili uh, possibilidades and impossibilidades. Possibilities and possibilities. As well as a few of our um, expressions with, uh, with the subjunctive mode. Using those impersonal expressions. The negatives versus the positives and so on. Um, got a, a few activities lined up for you uh, for this lesson to help you... Um, understand that a little bit better fundamentally and i hope all is going well for you gracias ciao adios hasta luego until next time